Hello everybody. Today I'm going to be doing a trash to treasure, literally a trash to treasure. This was a freebie armoire. Um, it's actually the bottom half of a freebie armoire. I got this for free uh, and it needs some TLC. This is pretty dated. Um, so I'm going to really dress this up. First of all, I'm going to be applying, I'm going to be priming it, but I'll, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be applying Would You Bend to dress it up. I'm going to be doing some, a design like this on all the drawers. So those will be bordering the drawer. And then that in the center, we're going to really dress it up. So first I need to prep this piece. Okay. Now this piece is really slippery. It is very slippery. So I cleaned it really well with a TSP based cleaner, which I use Dixie Bell's white lightning. And then I rinsed it off really well. So now my piece is clean. And if I don't have a bonding primer, I could take sandpaper to it and give it a scuff sand. Um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and prime it anyway. I'm gonna be using a Dixie Belle Slick Stick. And Slick Stick is their bonding primer. You've seen me use it on my page before. I'm gonna be putting on probably just one coat because it, I mean, it's slippery, but it's not extremely slippery. But I'm gonna be um, putting on one coat of Slick Stick. I'm gonna let it sit overnight. That gives it a chance for that bonding primer to really bond to my piece of furniture. And I know it's not gonna go anywhere. Then I'm gonna be coming in and using one of Dixieville's new fall colors. This is Merlot, isn't that a gorgeous color? And this is a limited edition color. They're doing it for the fall. And um, I will try to find the recipe as well. So when this is no longer available, you'll know what colors to mix together to get this color. So I'll, I'll, I'll put together a recipe for you. But um, for now, this is available through Dixie Bell um, just for the fall seasons while quantities last. But this is Merlot, so I'm gonna be painting the whole thing in Merlot. Then I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna accentuate it with some black wax. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing I need to do is I need to get my primer on. Like I said, this is a bonding primer. It's gonna work for any slippery surface, and this is a really slippery surface. Uh, like I said, I could have scuff sanded and gotten away with just scuff sanding, but I'm gonna do a, go ahead and do the primer. Okay, so I'm going to put a thin coat of the primer on. Get on all those grooves and recessed areas. Now, if you're in an area that is really dry and your uh, primer, as far as a slick stick, the slick stick, if your primer is drying quickly on you and uh, leaving drag marks, I do recommend misting your brush, not your piece of furniture. So if it is drying on me and I'm getting some drag marks because it's a, you're in a dry area, especially like Arizona, then you're gonna mist it with a little bit of water. So your brush is misted and that will help allow it to glide and go farther. So I'm gonna go ahead and get one coat of primer over this entire piece, let it set for 24 hours, and then we're gonna start painting. Okay, so I have just my one coat of slick stick on here. I let it set overnight. And I was gonna do the would you bend next, but I'm gonna get, I know that since reds are a difficult color as far as for coverage, and this red, this Merlot, has kind of like a rusty nail, kind of a rust colored to the red. And so I know it's gonna take multiple coats. So I've decided I'm gonna go ahead and put a coat on just so I can get a feel for the look. And then we're gonna come back and we're gonna add the Would You Bend on before I do my final coat of the Merlot. And so I am going to be using my Dixie Belle Oval Medium. You can use any synthetic brush, works great. You can use a natural bristle brush as well. Dixie Belle has some natural bristle brushes. Um, but I like to use a synthetic brush because it, to me, it leaves a smoother finish. I do have a missing bottle of water nearby um, to help uh, smooth out the paint. Oh, that's pretty. So it's not really a red, it's, it's, a, it's definitely a orange, red, kind of a, a definite rust, which is gonna be so pretty on this piece. And I'm thinking the black wax, or now that I'm seeing this on here, I might be doing the brown wax instead. So I'm gonna go ahead and get uh, one coat on here, and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna do the, the would you bend to really bring it uh, some detail to it before I do my final coats of paint and my decorative accenting. So let's go ahead and get this coat on here. And if you need to thin your paint at all, you know, what I'm saying is if, if, if you're getting drag marks because of your temperature or um, if you want a smooth finish, you can mist it with a little bit of water or you can mist your brush. And that just helps your paint glide and go even farther. 
So you use a lot less paint when you mist a little bit. It's not a lot of water, we're not doing a wash, but if you mist with just a little bit of water as you go, um, it actually helps you use less paint. Okay, there we go. Getting in all those little grooves and raised details. Oh, this is going to be such a pretty color. <laughs> okay, I'm going to keep going with this first coat, and then we'll come back and we'll do the Would You Bend. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and start the Would You Bend. And now the Would You Bend, remember, are, they're made of wood, it's a wood composite, but you can heat them up and then they're bendable. Hence why we say Would You Bend. Um, so I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna be using these to dress up the piece of furniture. I'll have all the information down in the description box as well. So first thing I like to do is I like to heat them up using a griddle. So I have my little griddle here and I have my tin foil on it. Uh, so you'll notice that I am gonna be removing this border on the outside because this is actually too big. Uh, if you see here, it's too big to put two of these on the door like this. It's too big. So, but it's the perfect size without that border on it. So I'm actually, uh, you heat these up first. So I'm heating them up and I'm gonna turn this right here so you can see. And what I'm doing is now, they're easy to work with when they're warm. So I have my griddle set at like 350 degrees. I'm gonna take a blade now that these are warmed up and I'm just gonna cut off this outside border. You can see how easy it is to cut off while they're warm. Okay, so I'm just cutting this border off, just running my blade all the way down wherever it's connected to that design. And I will save this border, I'll show you in a minute. I'll save this for another project. I don't want to throw away any scraps. But see how I'm detaching it? I'm just detaching it wherever it's connected. Be careful so you don't burn your fingers with the griddle. I'm being very careful. Okay, so I will save this and use this. If I ever need piping or a border on a drawer, I save these and I'll use these if I need to. So I always keep them in a safe spot. Okay, so now, I've cut off that border, but you can see I have some like little rough edges. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this cool off. I have one cooling right now. You let it cool off and then you can sand them. I don't wanna sand them when they're bendable, but now that it's cooled off, it hardens back into its position. But you can see how these edges, you can tell that they've been cut. So I'm just gonna take my sanding block. They're very easy to sand. So I'm just gonna sand off any of those cut, cut edges. See how those cut edges will just go away? You wanna let it cool off so it's nice and stiff so it's easier to work with. So I'm just gonna go around and sand all of these cut edges. I don't wanna to look to look like it's been cut. So sanding those little edges. Okay, there, I think I got it all. Okay, so now that I've got all my little edges sanded, just double checking, I'm gonna put it back on the griddle so it warms back up for me to apply. Okay, I have another one ready. I have this, I have a couple of them ready. So we're going to go ahead and apply a couple of these onto this door. Okay, these two go together, yes. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and apply it to this door here and then, and then I'm gonna put the center medallions on. So we're gonna get this door done. I am actually using a wood glue. This is Tight Bond uh, Ultimate Wood Glue. You need to use a wood glue with this product. Okay, I have it on a plate with a little sponge brush. Okay, so let's do this first one. You see how they're bendable? You can bend them in any position you want. Once they cool down, they lock into that position that, you're, that you have them in. Okay, so I'm going to be putting that wood glue on the back. You want it everywhere on the back of the surface so that we know it's gonna adhere everywhere onto my furniture piece. Moving quickly so that that glue does not dry on me okay and if the, if you're working with a bigger piece and it starts to cool on you too quickly 
You'll be able to heat it back up with a heat gun and I'll show you that. I'll get my heat gun out and do that as well. Okay, I'm just getting this glue on this entire back. I'm not getting so much on it that my glue is gonna be running out when I put it on. I'm just making sure I have a nice, nice coating over it, but not too much where it's dripping. Apply it to my piece. And I will be able to move it if I need to. I will be able to move it if I need to. I just get my heat gun out. Okay, so I'm gonna hold it in place. I'm gonna take a little craft brush. So if I have any glue that's on the outside, I can just take my craft brush and wipe any of that glue out that is kind of squeezed out from underneath my, my woodie bend. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna push it down everywhere. Any glue seeps out, I just catch it with the brush. It won't ruin my brush, I just need to um, wash my brush after I'm done. Pressing it everywhere so that glue holds. Okay, and then I can get my heat gun and heat it into place. I'm gonna put the next one on first and then I'll heat them both up. Okay, I'm just gonna use my heat gun. Heat it back up. That's, re that's also reheating the glue underneath so I can get a solid fix. Don't hold the heat gun in one, uh, one spot for too long. You don't wanna bubble your paint. Even though I'm painting over this and doing another coat, you don't want to bubble up your paint. Heat this back up. That makes it bendable so I can press it completely flat to conform to the cabinet door. Okay. Okay. I'm pushing all of my tips and my edges so they're all touching. I want this to be flush and solid with this door in every edge, corner, gap. Everything is laid flush against that door so it looks like it's a piece of the door. Okay, so all the wood you bends on, can you kind of see the vision with this now? Kind of dressing it up a little bit from plain to fancy. So the next step is I'm gonna let this dry. Um, I'm gonna make sure that all this is set up. I'll come back here in a couple hours and I'm gonna go ahead and put on my next coat of paint, which is be the same color, the Merlot. I'm gonna make it this all painted so it's one color. And then we're gonna come back and accent all this wood you bend. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and use my same brush. I cleaned it in between. This can be painted, stained, um, anything you do to normal wood, you can do to the wood you bend. So I'm just pushing that paint in to get all those nooks and crannies. I think I'm gonna be able to get away with just the two coats because I'm actually getting pretty good coverage right there. Okay, so let's just keep going, get all this painted up, then I'll let it dry overnight and then we're gonna add the accents. Okay, now I got my two coats on here. It only needed two coats. I'm really happy about that. So, but I'm gonna add to bring out some of these details. Now this is, like I said, a beginner project. So I'm just gonna be using waxes to bring out these details. And I'm gonna show you an easy way to do it. First thing I'm gonna, cause there's all these moldings and if we use a normal rub on wax with a brush, 
Um, these moldings can, can they can accumulate the thicker waxes around all these moldings. So I'm going to be using Dixie Belle's spray wax. It's called their Easy Peasy Spray Wax. Cures it in six hours and it dries in 30 minutes. But what you want to do is you want to shake it up really well. It is water resistant after it cures in the six hours. And so this is a great option for sealing your piece, especially if you struggle with a clear coat. You can use the Easy Peasy Spray Wax. It's water based. Okay, and then I've got some applicator pads from Dixie Belle. These are just their white applicator pads. Usually we use them for staining. I use these for buffing my waxes as well. I'm gonna show you an easy way to get a really soft, very uh, subtle, but a soft wax look. And I'm gonna be using black wax. So first thing I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be spraying my piece down with the Easy Peasy Spray Wax. And then I'm going to evenly spread it out. But while it's still wet, I'm gonna apply my black wax and it's gonna give it a soft, almost painted look, um, but very subtle. So I'm gonna shake it up. Okay, let's go ahead and spray this. This is how easy it is to seal a piece with wax. I'm not gonna have all those clumps and stuff to deal with around all these details. So it's just a very fine mist. So I've got it all over. I'm using two separate pads. One pad is gonna be for my, uh, my Easy Peasy Wax. The other one is going to be for, and you can use a t-shirt too, a lint-free t-shirt. But one is for my black wax and one is for the Easy Peasy Wax. And I'm not wiping it off, I'm just spreading it out so that I have full coverage. It'll look like it's wet. If I've got it everywhere, it's gonna look a little wet. I don't want any running spray wax. So I'm just spreading it out getting all the excess pushed into areas that might not have any wax. Okay. Now, before it dries, I'm not, I'm not wiping it completely off. Before it dries, I am going to add my black wax. Okay, my black wax. I am using a French tip brush. You can use any natural bristle brush that you want. You can use a craft brush if you want. I got a hair, I just saw it in the light, there we go. I'm gonna tap into my black wax. I'm gonna tap it into my lid because look at all that chunk, that big chunk right there. I don't want that directly on my piece. So I'm gonna push that up into my bristles. My wax is still wet. Now I'm gonna go around and I'm going to apply the black wax. It looks kind of scary. But this is gonna give a nice, soft, dark, grungy glow, okay. Get it all over, get it on this wood you've been molding, all the crevices. I'm getting it on here while my Easy Peasy Spray Wax is still wet. And I can just dip into my lid whenever I need more wax. See how I'm bringing out these details? Around all the stuff here. Moving quickly, because I want to catch it while my Easy Peasy Wax is still wet. That allows me to remove a lot of the wax. Okay, it's getting in some of these nooks and crannies. Swirling my brush around. Okay, oops, gotta do that section there. I had too much, too much on my brush. I can see that. When you see like clumps of wax, you got too much on there. Okay, getting in these little nooks and crannies around these edges. And I know it looks messy. Bear with me. Okay. Okay. Now I'm gonna come back with my other, not my one, I just use the easy peasy one, but my other one, and I'm going to gently wipe any excess away that I don't want. I'm just kind of smudging it out. And you'll be able to see it side by side with the door that I haven't done yet. So you'll really be able to see the impact. If you use a t-shirt, you can really get in those nooks and crannies. But having that wet, easy peasy wax is just allowing it to move a little bit easier, not get grabbed by the paint so quickly. I'm 
always keep a pile of t-shirt, cut up t-shirts. There, I'm able to get in these areas a little bit better with the t-shirt and my finger. Okay, well, I'm going to continue to keep waxing all of this piece um, and I'll come back when it's done. All I'm doing, like I said, is spraying on the Easy Peasy Spray Wax while it's wet, applying the black wax, and then wiping it back. Level. So I'm gonna be using Copper Gilding Wax from Dixie Belle. This is an oil-based wax. So um, you do want this step to be your last step. So I don't have to seal this piece because I already sealed it with Easy Peasy Spray Wax. And then I have the dark wax on it, so now I don't have to do any more sealing. I could, because Dixie Belle's waxes are water-based, I could go back and after a few days of drying, um, I usually like to leave it at least a week. Uh, I could go back with a clear coat and satin if I wanted to add a little bit extra protection, but I'm not going to on this piece. This is gonna be my last step. It's oil-based, it does not have to be sealed. Okay, so you can see, I'm just gonna hit these high points, just get a little copper. I'm just barely tapping in my tin. I don't want a lot of product on my, on my uh, finger. And personally, I, I prefer to use, sometimes I use this if I want a lot of, uh, a lot of wax, I'll use my pointing finger because I'm more firm with that. But if I want to be gentle on details, I use my weakest finger. This is my weakest finger. A lot of people, this is their weakest finger. But I use this one. A weak finger means you're gonna be much more gentle which allows you to apply less product because you're being very gentle. So I just want to hit these high points, just riding these edges. See how that's really bringing it to life? You can really see it right there, the difference. And I'm gonna just put a little copper along those lines there. I want to make sure I hit all my high points so that all those details really come out. Now doing this off to the side and not right in front of it, it's a little bit more difficult I need to be in front of it, but then I'd be in front of you. So that's it. Just take your finger and gently hit all of your high points, and that is gonna bring out all the details. And it's just taking that extra step to add character to your piece. Okay, so I'm gonna continue to keep doing this, but you can definitely see a difference. You have this section here that has not been done and this section that has been done. Not completely done, I'm missing some spots, but I need to get in front of it to do it. Um, and it does not have to be it does not have to be sealed now if you do decide you want to put a sealer over your gilding waxes wait three to five days make sure it's really dry uh, before you put a sealer on it but I usually don't seal my gilding wax if you get it in an area that you don't want it catch it right away with a baby wipe and get it up you don't want to leave it there because the longer it's there the harder it is to remove um, so there we go Okay, I'm gonna continue on and then uh, we are just about done with this piece. Okay, well there you go, she's all done. The only thing I did off camera was put a coat of no paint gel stain in walnut on the top and clear coated it, but that is about it. This was a um, basic makeover, but a lot of impact. Um, just to recap real quick, I primed it and then I put a coat of um, the new Merlot color from Dixie Belle. This is a limited time color. And as soon as the colors are no longer available, I will figure out the recipe and put the recipe in the comments down below. But we have to wait till these are no longer available. But right now, these are out for the fall. And this one, like I said, is Merlot, is what I painted this with. We use the dark wax, the easy peasy spray wax, the copper gilding wax, and that is it. And we got the wood you bend on here. I showed you every step of the way. This is, um, this was a beginner's lesson. And so I hopefully you give this look a try. It, like I said, um, went from a free bottom half of a hutch to this. So I'm happy with how she came out. Okay, well, make sure you click on subscribe and click on that little bell so you're notified every time that I put up a new video. Uh, you can also follow me over on Facebook at AJ's Vintage Designs. I do a lot of free painting tutorials over there as well. If you want to really learn how to paint furniture, head over to my Facebook page and give me a follow over there. And I'm on TikTok and also Instagram, all of them, AJ's Vintage Designs. Okay, well, thanks for joining me, everybody. Love and hugs, and I'll have pictures at the end.